Hello, welcome to October 2022 Monthly Beauty Favorites and Fails. I have such a great mix of beauty, lifestyle, fashion, and home products in this video. I'm so excited to share with you and a few disappointing fails. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I have a lot of products to get through. So let's go ahead and get into what I loved and didn't love in October. I had zero intention of buying this first product. It launched, well, I should say they launched, and I thought, you know, I'm not getting sucked into this again. I'm not doing it again. Well, I was shopping in Sephora the other day, grabbing several things and passed by the hourglass display with the new-ish ambient lighting edit unlocked face palettes. There are three versions for different skin tones and I picked up the elephant palette. I do love that every holiday season they have these unlocked palettes. They're always beautiful. The quality is always amazing, but I mean, I really don't need this, but they just call to me. I don't know what it is. I do love the packaging. These, instead of clasping together, they are magnetic. So that's a little bit different for this year. This palette works really well for my particular skin tone. I do have light, medium, neutral, leaning, warm skin, which if you're subscribed to me, you hear me say that all the time. If I need to get ready very quickly, I can use this palette on both my face and my eyes and it comes out really nicely. So I bronzed with this today and the brushes I'm using are brushes I'm gonna be talking about here in a minute. I use this both on my face as well as on my lower lash line and into my crease and transition. There's no kick up with these because they're baked, which is so nice and it makes it just easy, quick, and effortless. Now I went heavy handed with both blushes because I wanted to show you how they buff out with the finishing powders after. I went in with this shade on this side of my face and with this middle shade on this side. I feel like in this lighting, you may not be able to see much of a difference, but in person you can. There's a little bit more of a sheen with this blush but don't be scared of the sheen in these. It's very, very flattering. It gives you kind of that luminous candlelit glow. Now this highlighter here looks a little bit deep for my skin tone, but it actually isn't. You can see on the swatch on the back of my hand, it's kind of a light medium champagne gold, and I don't usually like a gold highlighter, but you can see it beneath the finishing powder here. It's not too gold for me. It's so beautiful. And these are the two finishing powders. You can use these separately depending on if you want a warmer look or a brighter look. You can use them strategically on your face. I blend them together after my makeup is completely finished. It gives me that candlelit glow, that perfected airbrush look, smooths my pores even further, and it diffuses any harsh lines I have and helps if I go overboard with blush, contour, or bronzer. So yet again, I got sucked in by Hourglass. I'm glad because I really love it. And this video, I think, is going up during the Sephora sale, which ends on November 7th. So if you're seeing it during that time, because these are launched for the holidays, this would be a great time to pick that up for yourself or for someone else. If you're looking for a gift for someone, I just think these are really nice gifts because they give such a variety. They're great for travel, great for multitasking and getting ready quickly. And they're pretty. This is one of my favorite products from October and also one of the least expensive, I do believe. This is the insert name here or INH Quick Slick. So if you get flyaways like I do, it doesn't matter if it's in the front of your hair, wherever they are, this tames them so quickly and so easily. It's just got this little mascara wand that you just swipe through your hair wherever you have flyaways. And somehow it doesn't leave your hair all gross and wet or sticky or hard. It just works. Mine has a nice peach scent to it that I don't smell after I apply it to my hair. I just smell it in the tube, but I think there's four scents which makes it an enjoyable user experience. Kind of smells faintly like candy. This came in my FabFitFun box. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I do, but you can get this on Amazon and elsewhere. I have the link down below for this and everything I'm sharing in this video, plus what I'm wearing, as I always do. Love this so much. I, I had to put it in this video, no question. You know, I've had this Cali Race, oh, Let's try that again. So I've been using the Cali Ray So Blown Clean Blurring Primer for a while now, and I don't know why I haven't shared it until now. I think I just kept forgetting, and it's time, because this is a really nice primer, but it's not just a primer. This is lightweight, blurring, and softly mattifying, but at the same time, it hydrates and nourishes and moisturizes. It doesn't make your skin feel dry and tight the way a lot of blurring, mattifying primers do. 
too. Now they say it can be worn alone for a filtered look, or you can of course layer it under makeup the way you normally do primer. It's got collagen peptides, camellia oil, and vitamin E. So it's got really nice ingredients in it while it's helping your makeup last longer during the day, while it's fighting oil, minimizing pores, and the look of imperfections and fine lines. I don't find it evens out my redness enough to where I can wear it alone. There's no tint to it. I love the cream consistency. A lot of blurring, mattifying primers have a thicker consistency. This absorbs like a lotion and feels just incredibly lightweight. I don't feel like I'm wearing an extra layer under my foundations. And it's very compatible with every foundation I've tried it with. Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments down below. I've just, I've been really impressed. This product has gone viral. It seems like everyone in the world loves it, except for me. I hate it when that happens because I always think either I'm doing something wrong or something is wrong with me. I don't know. I've tried it several times. It's not my favorite. This is the Tower 28 Make Waves Lengthening and Volumizing Mascara. I have seen such raves for this product. It's got this nice little curved wand, which doesn't look like much, especially with all the raves I'm hearing. I was expecting this big, robust wand. Now I have stick straight eyelashes. I have to use an eyelash curler, but my lashes don't hold a curl with a lot of non-waterproof mascaras they tend to weigh them down. So I usually will go in with a light coat of waterproof just to hold the curl before I go in with a more volumizing and lengthening mascara. But I always test mascaras to see if they might work on their own. And sometimes they surprise me. They do. And I'm thinking because of all the raves, this is it. This is that mascara. Oh, no, 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 no. This weighed my lashes down almost immediately and straightened them back out. And I didn't really see a lot of length or volume either. I kept hearing it holds my curl. It gives me all this volume. It gives me all this length. So I tried it again after doing my light coat of waterproof mascara. And I still just saw a moderate amount of volume and moderate lengthening. I tried it several more times and you know, it's it's fine, it's okay for a daily mascara in terms of volume and length, but it's nothing to write home about. At least in my opinion, there are mascaras that perform far better than this one, especially since every evening after wearing this, I had little flakes on the tops of my cheeks, on my under eye area. That's not fun. So yeah, I was really disappointed in this. So after testing it out, I went to reviews and I started looking at the lower ratings to see if I was in fact the only person in the world that didn't like this mascara. And it turns out that a lot of the one and two star, the lower reviews were rated that way for similar reasons because it weighed their lashes down or they had flaking. So I feel like this works for a lot of people, but there are a few of us that just doesn't. Persona Cosmetics, one of my personal favorite brands and a very underrated brand in my opinion, just launched a new shade of their blush multi-cheek just last week. It's called Jam. I feel like this is the fall winter sister to Bubble, the powder and stick blush that I rave about so much. It looks kind of dark and scary in the stick, but it applies beautifully. It's buildable, blends out like a dream, just like all of her other multi sticks. It doesn't remain sticky at all. It's a beautiful, beautiful shade for this time of year. If you want something a little bit deeper to give you that flush of color. And I think this is a really great universal shade too that will work across all skin types because it is such a buildable formula that you can sheer out or, you know, really build up the pigment. This is another thoughtful, beautiful launch from Persona that I am so happy with and I'll be using a ton. Almost all the brushes I use to apply my makeup today are from BK Beauty's new Core Line extension. As someone with a smaller face, I've been enjoying these because these were designed for more precise placement of product and were inspired by her existing best-selling brushes. So I applied my foundation on this side of my face with this 109 brush, which is shaped like her original foundation brush, but it's a little bit less dense, making it just 
almost give a sponge-like application, but in brush form. I have gotten no streaks with this brush whatsoever. It's also nice for cream contour and blush. And this is the 110 concealer brush, which for me, this looked a little large when I first saw it for my under eye area. But to my surprise, it's been working really well because it's soft, yet it's very densely packed. So she described this as being kind of a sponge-like tip on a, a brush. I don't usually like using brushes for concealer because they can leave streaks or little splotches of product. I usually use my fingers or a sponge. And this is a brush that I'm on board with using for my concealer. You saw me apply my Hourglass Bronzer with this 111 bronzer brush earlier. I love this because it's a little bit smaller than a lot of other bronzer brushes, but it's still really soft and pliable. And so it just diffuses product and blends it out really perfectly. And I love that it's smaller so that if I want to keep it localized to the perimeter of my face, I can do that or I can take it all over. It allows me to be a little bit more precise than a big fluffy blending brush. And I enjoy using it for creams. As you can see here, I'm applying my Chanel bronzer with this very lightly. I didn't want to apply it too heavily because I was showing you the hourglass a little bit later, but I enjoy using it with both powders and creams. This small flat powder brush is a great little multitasker. Today, I think I used it underneath my eyes to apply powder. I also used it to tap in and buff out my highlighter, which it just does beautifully. If you're someone who normally likes to do that with your finger, this is a great brush to use. This is also great for precise contouring blush too. There's a lot of great uses for this little brush. And then we have a small angle face brush. Again, this is a great little multitasker. I think I used it for blush today. But this is also great for the under eye area for powder and to contour with wherever you're contouring. Another multitasker. I am all about multitasking with my brushes and the face brushes in the set do it well. There are also four eye brushes included in the set. I used the mini shader today to line my lower lash line and the medium blender I used for my crease and transition. The mini shader I used to add a little bit more depth to my outer corner and some to my crease. And we also have a mini pencil brush. I think these brushes are great additions to the BK Beauty line. I use BK Beauty brushes in my everyday makeup routine. Now I'm not seeing these available as individual brushes just yet. They are available only in the set. I do have a 10% off code for you that lives down in my description box for BK Beauty. If you want to check that out or just go see what's on the site. Makeup brushes can be an investment. I get that, but they can also make a big difference in how your makeup blends and looks. And I always think around the holiday time is a great time to upgrade your brushes, gift brushes, and that kind of thing. So I was excited to see these launch, especially for those of us with smaller features, smaller eyes, smaller faces. I think this, these are great additions. Buxom just launched this new Hot Toddy Eye and Cheek Palette and four lip products. I have one of them on today. I'll talk about that here in a second. Now this is what the inside of this palette looks like. I have some conflicting thoughts on this. My first thought when I opened the palette was uh, just all this wasted space over here. I, I noticed that right away. I feel like they could have maximized the space and configured things a little bit differently and given us another shade or two. And then I wondered, is there another one? Because this seems a little light. It doesn't seem like it's going to work for all skin tones. This is the only one they have. So just know that. And then I swatched it and I just feel like these two shades basically kind of look the same. So I'm not quite sure what the thought process was when they put this together, but I decided not to jump to conclusions. I was going to, you know, play around with it first. And in doing so, and I'm going to demonstrate this with a very loosely packed brush, I noticed all the kick up. Are you getting that on camera? There is a ton of kick up with these matte shades in particular. I use my fingers for the shimmer, so that's not an issue. But I mean, do you see all of that kick up? That just came off of my hand from tapping the brush. That's kind of ridiculous. Now, I will say, if you tap off your brush and then maybe give it one quick tap again before you go into your eye, the shadows do blend nicely, but I feel like I end up with a very monochromatic look. I applied it today on top of what I had done with the Hourglass palette, and I mean, this is what I ended up with. I just feel like this could have been thought out a little bit better, so I would say for me, this is a fail. I just don't see myself reaching for this, and I like Buxom, so it's kind of unfortunate. Now, I'm wearing the full-on plumping lip cream in Hot Toddy. I really like it. I applied it 
it over my iconic nude from Charlotte Tilbury lip liner. It was applied lightly, so it is a little bit more opaque than it would be if it was over, you know, just my plain lips. These give a nice plumping effect. They're flattering and they stay on a decent amount of time. I applied my lip color and was going to film, but then lunch was brought to me, kind of a surprise. So I ate lunch and I came up to film and my lips still looked pretty good. I started filming and I thought, you know, maybe I should top it off, but there was a lot of product still left on my lips, even after eating and drinking from lunch. I've been filming and talking for roughly an hour now and periodically sipping from my lunch beverage. And I have not reapplied this gloss once and it still looks really good. So this is a good one as buxom lip products usually are. Now I'm showing that the shade I have on, Spice Hot Toddy, and another of the four shades are out of stock on Ulta. I will try and find them somewhere else for you and have them in the description box when this goes live, or maybe they'll be back in stock. I don't know. But the other two shades that are in stock look pretty good too, if you want to check those out. I think I briefly talked about this Kopari Moisture Whipped Ceramide Cream in my latest skincare routine. I also showed it in, I think, a TikTok and an Instagram reel, maybe. I have been using this pretty much every single night. I don't know if you can see how much is scooped out of there. I have oily combination skin that is pretty normal around the perimeter and can get dry, but I can get shiny in my T-zone. This is great for those of you with dry skin for daytime or nighttime. It's not heavy and it sinks right into your skin. But for my skin type, I've been wearing it at night and it doesn't make me super greasy at night, yet it provides me with the hydration I need. It claims to lock in hydration for seven 72 hours. So it works around the clock basically to restore and strengthen the skin barrier. I love products with ceramides. It's also got hyaluronic acid. It just leaves my skin feeling so soothed and soft and moisturized. And it's also scentless. It has no scent whatsoever. It almost seems basic because of how unscented it is and how lightweight, but it's got just such nice ingredients. And my sensitive skin has taken to it really nice nicely. I've had good luck with a lot of Kopari products and this is another one that I've added to my list. I may have shared this fragrance with you before. I, I know I've shared things from Replica with you before, but I'm not sure if I've shared this fragrance in particular, maybe in a haul or something. But when I am gravitating towards one particular fragrance a lot, I need to share it with you. So this is Replica Lazy Sunday Morning. This is the small size and I'm kind of wishing I had gotten the bigger size because I just keep reaching for it. Now I've already used up a little travel size and I've, I've moved on to this and I'm not loving this so much because it's a fall fragrance. It's because it's a comforting, cozy fragrance, which I tend to like a lot this time of year. I want to be cozy and kind of in my house and, and that's what this is for me. So on the bottle, it says soft skin and bed linen. And the description says a classic floral scent that blends iris and lily of the valley Valley with white musk to evoke the feeling of waking up in the sun's morning rays, a breath of fresh air. This women's fragrance celebrates purity, freedom, and the joy of sleeping in. It's a little bit of musk, a little bit of clean, a little bit of floral, and, and it's just cozy. It's an inoffensive fragrance. It's one that you can wear literally anywhere or just spray on at home, and I have been doing that a lot. I'm loving it. I had to share it because I've been just putting it on constantly. It just, it makes me feel good. I've been dealing with a pretty bad sinus infection. I had full laryngitis for a couple of days and then it morphed into this whole sinus thing. You may still be able to hear it in my voice. I'm not sure, but I have been using these in my shower and have really been liking them. These are the Body Restore Relief Shower Steamers in eucalyptus and mint. This comes with 15 aromatherapy tablets. They're wrapped in foil. You just unwrap it and put it somewhere in your shower where, I can smell it right now, where the steam will get to it. You don't want to put it directly under running water. They have several scents, several aromatherapy options, and I happened to choose this one a few weeks ago, even before I had any of this gunk going on. 
but I'm really glad I did because this particular scent has really helped open up my sinuses more, helped me breathe better after using it in the shower. It just helps. They're not tested on animals. They're vegan. They use natural essential oils. This is a great little find that I was originally going to use just for the sensory experience, but it, it's helped me out <laughs> more than I thought. Okay, I'm putting my hair to the back so that I can share the earrings that I have on and the ring too that I am just thrilled with. So over the past few years in a couple of my local boutiques and online and on some celebrities, I had seen these earrings in particular, not necessarily with this stone. They have different stones you can choose from. And I just always thought that they were so pretty and elegant for a statement earring that wasn't over the top. So these are from Dean Davidson and I've been eyeing them up for so long and I'm so glad that I finally got a pair because I feel like they're more more versatile than what I thought they were. They also have now a mini size. If you don't want a pair that's this long, you can get them in silver and like I said, different stones. I just love how they catch the light so beautifully. They're delicate yet not invisible. I could wear these to a formal event or with a white button up and pants. They are more versatile than what I thought. And this ring that you've been seeing throughout the video, I also recently got. I've actually been wanting a cocktail ring that also made a statement but wasn't over the top to wear either on my ring finger or my middle finger. And I just love this one. It's simple yet not too plain. If you, like me, have been looking at Dean Davidson pieces and have been wondering, is the quality actually there? Is it worth it? I personally think it is. It is a step above other jewelry that I have for sure. And if you're thinking about gifting, as everyone is this time of year, the gift boxes, the presentation is really nice. There's this storage pouch that has a magnetic snap, just really nice overall, everything. I'm just ecstatic over these pieces. Pieces. And if you are thinking about getting jewelry for a gift, I think anyone you give these to would be happy. Not just these styles, but they have so many beautiful pieces on their website. On the other end of the spectrum, I found a new watch band for a really great price to replace the one that came on my Apple Watch because it was just looking kind of rough. And they have tons of colors to choose from. They have just your traditional clasp and it tucks underneath, which is really nice so the strap isn't kind of flapping around. Around. So the shade that I have here is called Milk Tea, and I also got it in olive green. I thought that might be kind of nice for fall. You just slide them on and they snap in place, and so far so good. I mean, I've been using this one for weeks now, and they feel just as nice as my Apple Watch Band does. They don't feel chintzy. I mean, the price point is great. Tons of colors to choose from. I'll have that link down below. Okay, let's talk about some jeans because I know there are a lot of you that need to upgrade your jeans wardrobes. I just did a blog post on updating some trends in your closet. If you don't know, I have a blog and I put some different content on there. I'll link it down below in my description box. I have new posts every week, so be sure you're subscribed to it if you want some new fun content that, you know, sometimes relates to beauty, but sometimes it's lifestyle. So my closet has been full of skin jeans in darker rinses, which is not really the thing right now. And you know, I don't want to be looked at like I'm not keeping up, like, I, you know, I'm two decades behind. So I decided to try and find some lighter rinse jeans, some boot cut, wider leg flare jeans, that kind of thing. I found these Citizens of Humanity jeans. I, I will pay a little bit more for jeans because I'm, I'm hard to fit. And I really don't like it when jeans stretch out during the day and lose their shape. So these are a high rise boot cut. I have a long torso, so on me, they're more normal rise boot cut. I've worn these several times. Here is a photo of me with my niece at a concert. She complimented me on them. My daughter complimented me on them. So I feel good. I feel like I'm on trend. I'm loving these. They have a little bit of stretch, so they're comfortable. They're not confining. So if you're needing to update your jeans wardrobe, I've been really, really enjoying those. I didn't quite know where to start. I got these on a whim, crossed my fingers, and they worked. If you looked closely in that photo, I was wearing a clog. Those are also in. I got this pair from Corky's and they are so comfortable and they're cute and they're very on trend. Great for casual looks with fall. I mean, I feel like we're going very retro here, but I'm kind of here for it. So I liked these because they do have that cushiony footbed, but they also kind of go up in the back here. So your foot doesn't necessarily fly out of it. Now I originally ordered 
these in an eight because I kept seeing that you needed to size up. I'm typically seven, seven and a half. They were too big. So I sent those back and reordered them in a size seven and I am very, very happy with the size. They fit perfectly. I mean, honestly, how fall do these look? Okay, I have two more shoes I'm gonna talk about together for a reason. I'm a big wearer of gray, black, navy, you know, dark muted colors. And I have been loving lately pairing, a, you know, a black dress or a navy dress or whatever with a pop of color on the foot. So hot pink is really in right now. So I ordered these. I just think they're so cute. The heel's not too high. They're very comfortable. These also come in other colors, not just hot pink. They had navy, neutrals, other colors that they're comfortable if you want a heel that isn't going to kill you and will go with pants or dresses or whatever. These are from Sam Edelman, linked down below. But then I found these from Nine West, totally different style in more of a magenta shade, which is how I'm justifying having both of these. I have worn these. I wore these with a navy dress and it looked really good. So if you're looking for heels or clogs, I got you covered this month, but these are styles I've really been enjoying. I love that pop of color with a plain look with a neutral look. It, it just works. I ordered bedding from two different places. I'm really happy with it. So I just wanted to share it here really quickly. Yes, I am doing a home tour. I cannot tell you how many roadblocks I've had, but it's coming. So you'll see kind of a little glimpse here as I'm showing you the bedding. So I wanted to replace our heavy duvet and duvet cover with more of just, uh, just a quilt because we live in New Orleans. That duvet just is too much. Even in winter, I wanna cover it with something else and keep it more at the foot of the bed rather than all over the bed. So I got this quilt and I have three Euro shams coming from Pottery Barn. I love it. It's the perfect weight. I also got this really long lumbar pillow, which I'm loving. So you'll have to kind of picture this space with those three Euro pillows that we don't have now. The two king size shams you're seeing are from Quince. They have all kinds of things on that website and it's priced lower than what other retailer websites would normally charge for this quality. They have kind of a double flat ruffle. I don't even know if you can call it a ruffle, but I love the quality of these shams. I'm glad that that's what I went with. I just wanted some white neutral bedding and I'll play with color and, and things elsewhere in the room. Now in the guest room, the queen size duvet cover and pillowcases are linen and it's really nice quality. It washes and dries well. The entire set was $180, which for this quality is pretty unheard of to get a set of European linen like that for that price. The shade that I have is sand. And I also got this cute little sham set for $60 for both pillow shams. I'll see if I can find this throw pillow that I have on the bed. I got it from Target. I don't know what they're going to have online versus what they had in store. And the quilt too. Uh, that's from Target. We are getting there. It's taking a while, but we are getting somewhere with the bedding. You know the drill. Let me know what you loved in October in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for continuing to watch my monthly favorites each month. It means a lot to me that you guys come back every month to see what I loved, what I hated, and what my thoughts are on all these things. A big special thank you to members of my Stephanie Marie circle who continue to go above and beyond to support my channel. And an even bigger thank you to the premium members of the circle. I appreciate you more than you know. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful in some way. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!